Hello again. My name is Father James McLucas, and this is another edition of Catholic Insight, produced by Keep the Faith and found here at www.keepthefaith.org. And again, welcome. Father Vincent Young, uh, my good friend and college chaplain, as those of you who have tuned into previous Catholic Insights know, college chaplain for 10 years at Thomas Aquinas College. We're discussing the overall uh, aspects of freshmen, present seniors, just graduating now from, from high school, getting ready to take off for college and enter a, a new period of life. And we thought that just giving you our perspectives about some of the things that you're going to find, some of the aspects of this transition that you're going to find uh, both joyful and uh, also challenging, we'd like to uh, discuss these things with you here. Um, we ended the last uh, Catholic Insight by talking, I asked Father about the question about uh, possible pitfalls, common pitfalls that, that um, incoming freshmen very often fall into. Uh, Father, is there anything else you want to add about that or do you think we covered that sufficiently? Well, I'm sure we could have always developed something. I suppose if there's input from the families or parents that certainly would be helpful. I think uh, probably one area that you find, well, freshmen too, I, I think, but maybe not so much just them. But it's a, a caveat that I think most young people should be aware of when they go off to school, especially if uh, you have these remarkably wonderful Catholic families, although maybe they don't think of themselves that way. I think of them that way. Mm -hmm. But they have a great formation at home. They're very much uh, oriented to the good. They want to become saints but they also want to get on with their vocations. And the most uh, common vocation for young men and women is marriage. So I know an awful lot of young people that go off to college because they want to find their spouse rather than find a bachelor's degree. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they used to call it an MRS <laughs> degree. <laughs> but I think that, uh, especially because freshmen are more vulnerable than not. They're leaving their family and, and friends at home, their established uh, clusters of friends, cliques if you will, um, they have to start out fresh, brand new. Therefore in some ways emotionally they're rather vulnerable. So they have to find and become uh, convinced of having a right standard in terms of their social life, to get involved with the right crowd as it were. Mm -hmm. But over and above that as I say, it's so easy when they're emotionally vulnerable to come across Mr. or Miss Wright, or somebody who's just wonderful, knight in shining armor, uh, a maid in distress, uh, and they can very easily get involved in, a, I think, a, a kind of romance that's far too early for them, far too uh, draining and distracting, and I think that if they're worried about their future, their vocations, and their spouses, rest easy, do what you're supposed to do and let God take care of that. He's already chosen Mr. or Miss Wright. Mm -hmm. The maid has already been chosen. The knight has already well mounted on his charger and he's going to enter your life at the right time. So I think that's something to be at least a little bit careful about. Don't worry about marriage. Center on what it is that you're about by being there in the first place. It's going to cost you a lot of time and money. And give yourself what is right in front of you. Stay with that plate and don't worry about your vocation in the big picture yet. If you're secure and serene and knowing that you're to be married, that's wonderful. But don't rush into it. You didn't go to school to find your husband or your wife. If you do, God bless you. Wonderful. You have more things that are shared. But don't make that an unhealthy or an unwarranted concern at the moment. It's got to happen this year and 
and all the rest of it. Because again, especially the girls find their little uh, the weak in that area. You know, it's uh, oh, I've fallen in love, and you know, uh, I'll leave college, and we'll we'll do this, that, and the other thing, and I'll put them through medical school, and I'll put them through law school. Right. Uh, and what they usually put you through is hell. So. <laughs> 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 Regard. I'm not going to touch that father at all. Just take it easy. And I think, but I think that's a real thing for, you know, the kids themselves to be concerned about and parents too. You know, don't even think about serious one-on-one -on -one boy girl relationships until they're, you know, in the second semester of their junior year or in their senior year, if it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and not to be anxious about it because they're there for the first and the right things and let that be the, the foundational thing. So, in other words, then the old—it's uh, it's old to us, uh, but probably yes. isn't isn't old to those who are viewing uh, Catholic Insight. Is that um, keep keep a um, a group of friends. Um, in other words, you know, have have a good half dozen people that get together on a regular basis, sure, right. um, and and uh, you know, don't don't succumb to the pressure that you know, if I don't have a romance in my life, that there's something wrong with me. Uh, there's enough going on at college that that you don't have to force romance, all right. And and uh, one other thing that I think that is a pitfall that I found, uh, we've talked about this, um, uh, and, and is that when students first go to college, uh, there is this pressure to acquire friends, right. people, especially incoming freshmen. There, they have a lot of anxieties and fears, and they don't want to be alone, you know. Right. <clears throat> and therefore, there's this rush to form what they think are friendships based upon very, very superficial type of criteria. Right. Uh, usually, the person talks to me. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, the person the, the person seems to be nice. Right. Of course. And and uh, you know, when you first are, are meeting people, you'll meet a lot of people that way. Some people will be naturally, for reasons that you don't even, you don't even know at the time, are more attractive than others. But after about two or three weeks' time, you find out that, you know, there are other people out there <clears throat> that I really have more in common with. And the, the one or two people, usually it's, a, it's one individual in particular that I picked out as going to be my best friend. Right. In two or three weeks' time, you realize it's not going to be your best friend. As a matter of fact, you may end up having very little relationship with them at all. Okay, yeah, throughout sure. throughout. This is just friendship I'm talking about. Right, sure. And so, uh, don't rush into friendships. Remember what I said in the last Catholic Insight. All of you there have the same fears and anxieties. If you think that you're going to fix them, okay, right away by acquiring as many distractions as you can in terms of chalking up friendships. All right. It's going to probably be problematic for you very early on because then you've got to go and end up <clears throat> putting distance eventually between that person who, had, who initially you thought was going to right. be your best right. friend. And then you put, when you try to put distance, that causes hard feelings. Uh, you feel badly for the person. You feel badly about yourself. It's a distraction from, from, your, from, your, uh, right. from your academic work. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, my, my suggestion is go slow with friendships. Um, acquire them slowly, and you'll. And as in other areas of life, they will develop naturally. All right, but don't be rushing into them when you first get there, because right. because odds are the people that you think are going to be your best friends are not going to be your best friends, because you're going to meet other people within a very few weeks. Right. Of okay. Course. Sometime, Absolutely. most of the time, sooner. Right. Okay. No, of course. But but I but that that was and of course then the people you, also by the way. You're going to be victimized by the same thing. People who thought you were going to be their best friend all of a sudden of have found other people that they want to be just have a better and closer relationship with. Right. And so, therefore, you're going to be hurting at times, too, over that very same thing. So don't be surprised by it. And as I said, take, take it slow in terms of friendships. Um, I, both of us have spent a lot of time in our chaplain's offices, usually our, our, our places of residence on, on oh, the yes. campus. Um, and there at first is, um, especially by freshmen, a reluctance to go see the chaplain, okay, the Catholic chaplain. Now, in a good Catholic school, 
as we talked about before, there's no problem. The Catholic chaplain is right there. In, in a good Catholic school, he's going to be a good Catholic chaplain. Right. But as we said before also, you may have to look around for, for priests that are hopefully in parishes. And, you know, if you find other Catholic students they, they, who, who have uh, a common Catholicity about them with you, um, they will steer you to the right, to the right people. And, and just, you don't have to tell them why you're going to go see the college chaplain. Just simply say, you know, who is the college chaplain? I'd just like to meet him and introduce myself, you know, right. and, and, and just. But in your experience, Father, what were some of the more um, uh, common reasons why students would seek you out uh, in terms of uh, counseling, or whether it be spiritual or academic or otherwise? Mm. <clears throat> well, again, simple question, maybe a more complex answer. But I think, uh, certainly within my experience, uh, you have, again, all these kids pouring in, at least as the freshmen, with a whole lot of preconceptions. And that's natural. We all have that. Mm -hmm. No matter how experienced we are, there's always an anticipation of something. So little by little as life unravels they find some of those expectations are perhaps frustrated or not realized or they can't really put it all together yet mm -hmm. for whatever reason mm -hmm. and we all have different limitations so I think that uh, coming from a good Catholic background with a, a trust and a confidence in the priesthood mm -hmm. uh, notwithstanding of course uh, all the the terrible things that so many Catholics have had to endure these past years about the priesthood itself it's still alive and well in good Catholic hearts I think the natural gravity is to the priesthood for several reasons. First of all, I think very much certainly at the likes of uh, Thomas Aquinas College or at Christendom, you'll actually find them going to the priest for academic reasons. Mm -hmm. That is, they want to deepen, clarify, or understand better much of the material that they're studying, particularly in the area of philosophy and theology. Because, again, they may or may not have some exposure to it, but if the class is very fast-paced, if uh, they feel overwhelmed and they're missing some aspect of it, I think many of them will go to the padre and say, Father, what about, and you know, Augustine says this, or Socrates says that, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas, and it's all a big, you know, uh, churning uh, sea out there for them. So they'll go for clarification for academic things, in terms of ordering them and understanding them rightly in the classroom and for their own personal lives. I think that has been no small way to get some of the kids to come and, and find the priest. Secondly, I think there are uh, very human reasons, their own individual studies or crises, as it were, whatever kind, you know, they can't cope, they can't sleep, they're falling behind, uh, they can't get along with John Doe or Mary Smith and their work study or their job. and the conflict is causing them to not study well or they don't sleep well or whatever. So it becomes a very personal thing, a very human thing. Then, of course, there are those who want to follow a more sophisticated, if you will, uh, although it's not meant to be sophisticated, the spiritual life. And so they want a regimen. They want help and understanding with regard to their lives of prayer, the sacramental lives. Uh, to address the questions. What is my vocation? Uh, I feel at times called to religious life or the priesthood. I feel at times very much drawn to family life. Um, and if that is a, a closed issue, sometimes they still want to know, well, what should I do? You know, should I be a doctor, lawyer, and Indian chief? Mm -hmm. you know, what, is, what is the best thing for me? So you give them a, a, a kind of criteria for a discernment of spirits and then that usually becomes a regular contact, a regular encounter with the kids to encourage them, to clarify, and to sustain them with a, what was necessary in the order of grace and also in a human way, a little friendship, someplace that's safe, someplace they can relax, someplace they can go and have a good cry if they want, or they can put a, a hand through a wall and not have to go to the RA, you know, those kinds of things. And I think we provided that in the different aspects of the many hats that we wear as priests. So whether it's a spiritual direction or a spiritual question, more strictly speaking, it covers the gamut of their lives. But I think these are some of the highlights of the, the fundamental things that finally get them there, over and above peer <coughs> pressure. You know, if they, they see in a smaller Catholic college setting, certainly, suddenly, you know, this senior 
that junior, uh, this guy is serving mass, this girl is seen, you know, with the rosary and Legion of Mary, and they're all going to the father's, you know, office, the, one after the other. The, the kids are just going regular. I have an appointment. I got to see. I got to see father for ten minutes. I have to go into confession. I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. So I think that creates a wonderful question for them. If all of these wonderful people that I'm admiring, I'm interacting with, I've become friends with, are doing A, B, and C, insofar as it's deemed to be good clearly, they say, well, I've got to consider that. Maybe I should go and drop in and speak to the Padre. Maybe, you know, he's not so bad. Uh, maybe I can have a free cup of coffee, <laughs> or I may even have a cold beer, you know, <laughs> as the case may be. Um. This is one aspect of seeing the chaplain that, that I think, this is a kind of a tender issue, and, and it's a difficult one even for chaplains to talk about. But uh, it is not unusual, and we have not talked about this, but by the way, Father and I are just simply here discussing. We're not pros at this, so this is not rehearsed at all, as you can probably tell by now. But, but, um, uh, I'm going to join the screen act. <laughs> but um, uh, very often, when students are away from home for the first time uh, and they interact with other students, especially students that they find are virtuous people, some things, and I, I think partially this comes from, from the devil sometimes, okay, that basically that something in their past life will all of a sudden resurface. It could be uh, a moral issue involving them, it could be a moral issue involving somebody else that that touched them in some way, but it it, it comes up in terms of 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 a um, uh, it it'll resurface right. and and it will begin to really work on this person in a negative way. It usually presents itself as this type of question because this is, this is something that they hadn't thought about and it comes forward all of a sudden, all right? Like I said, it could be a serious moral issue. It may have nothing to do with it, right, sure. all right? But they think it does, mm -hmm. all right? And what will happen is this question will come. If people really knew what I was really like, I wouldn't have any friends. Mm -hmm. And the more virtuous the crowd, right. this type of question can come up and begin to haunt. Did you find that this that, that 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 this happened to you at all in terms of your of your uh, of your chaplaincy work? And do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so, Father. Yeah. I think um, again, there's a you know we say a lot <clears throat> for them. It's a lot. I yeah. think these burdens that the kids bring, especially if they add many obligations to themselves in terms of excellence, mm -hmm. the experience at school when things begin to open and blossom. Mm -hmm. new knowledge, mm -hmm. and new interaction with other individuals. <clears throat> yes, many things that they had thought perhaps were resolved in their minds or hearts that turn out maybe not to be so, either because they require greater knowledge or a greater maturity to deal with in terms of understanding. That, that's an important point. Sometimes it's just simply something that students will read or they'll hear in class and they'll, all of a sudden they'll hit them, you know, I didn't realize that was a sin. Right, of course. Okay, and all of a sudden it begins to haunt them. Now, again, sometimes it blows up bigger than what it really should uh, because that they, that they tend to think that they're kind of frauds. And, of course, the more virtue a person has, the more they have this sense of, I'm really a fraud. If people really knew, all right, what I was like, what I was really like, all right, and they wouldn't be my friend. I wouldn't have these friends, you know. And, and, and that issue came up for me. All right, maybe maybe it was just simply just uh, just the way it worked, okay. But as you came up for me, um, quite frequently, all right, uh, in, in my four years as a chaplain, and it's just simply there. Don't let that fester, okay. Whatever is bothering you, if something comes out of your past and resurfaces, something you didn't realize, okay. Whatever it is, don't let something fester. Go speak to the chaplain, because the longer it festers, right, you you become unhappy. You get filled with guilt, usually unnecessarily so, all right, and, and it can be resolved, all right, very, very easily by going and talking. Just have the courage to talk it out. Right. And, and it's just simply something that occurred to me as you were talking, you know, and, and I think it's... Uh, That's fair. I'm you know, sure. um, I mean, one thing there, I mean, just to follow up on your thread there, Father, 
one of the things that I found, particularly among the freshmen, is that new knowledge confuses them. Mm. They thought something may have been resolved, or they thought they had a grip of something, and then new knowledge somehow helps them to see whatever their individual struggles are, whether they're moral or personal or emotional, even intellectual at times, that this, how, this now is going to change a whole lot of things. Uh, many because they don't make a distinction between what's moral in terms of the intellect and will, uh, in terms of, say, sin or imperfection, versus merely human responses to scenarios that may be quite justifiable, even in terms of, say, anger or some response to uh, a situation that was less than perfect or less than good in their lives. So to bring all that together is the job of the priest because he has a greater sense not only of sinfulness, but he knows how to separate the wheat and the chaff. And I think with that help, a new peace descends on many of the kids. Because, again, there's a lot of pressure for a perfection or an achievement, and they transfer this over even into their spiritual and personal lives. And I think, again, uh, while it's not, he's not a Catholic author, there's something to be said for Henry David Thoreau when he said, Simplify, 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 simplify. Yes. and keep things just that simple, but clear. And when you don't know how to keep that clarity, well, that's what the priest's for. That's what he's trained for. That's what he lives about. That's what his whole uh, person in life is about. So go to him, make use of him, and trust him. And I think then that there's a new peace and serenity that comes there. Well said, Father. Well said. Just be, just, just don't let things fester. There you, you know? go. Right. And um, I'd like to recommend for, for you, uh, for your further listening pleasure, uh, <laughs> another <laughs> conference uh, that, that we have here on the page uh, that you found Catholic Insight here at www.keepthefaith.org. I'd recommend a conference by Arch Archbishop Fulton Sheen. It's a tape on human freedom, and I think it's something that as students go away uh, to college, uh, that they might find that there is a very clear distinction between freedom and license. As a matter of fact, Archbishop Sheen also has another conference that will be found on this page, uh, a, a conference called Freedom and License. And I think that those two conferences might be a good thing that students could benefit by as they begin uh, this transition in life. Father, again, thank you so much for the, for the, for the, for the, for the conversation. And uh, again, thank you for joining us here at Catholic Insight, and we would hope that you would join us again next week. God bless. Take care. Gloria.